Welcome to today's video. We're taking down the fireplace. I didn't know how well this would hold up. It's gonna go from that to that this year. Carpenters make mistakes, the good ones can hide them. It's done. We're moving into our second project of 2024. We're gonna take down our fireplace wall. <laughs> no. I think we should take it down. No, please, I love it. Somebody out there is gonna be confused. They're gonna be like, why are you taking it down? Why are we taking it down? The ceiling in the house is original. There's lots of cracks and former repairs that don't look too great. So we decided that we're gonna take the ceiling down, which means taking this down because we're actually in the process of engineering the vault for the ceiling. Wait, should we tell them everything no, now? No, I guess okay. Not. okay, you have to keep watching to find out. When we moved here, like Andrew said, we did not have the budget to be doing a lot of big scale projects. We renovated the kitchen, which was an unexpected cost because there was a lot of mice and we were scared to use the kitchen as is. So we decided, let's just renovate the kitchen. And then we renovated the stairs at our entryway. We decided to tackle that too. Yeah, we were while we were doing the flooring, we did the stairs at the same time. Right, and here we are almost four years later with a little bit more flexibility as far as renovations go. In this entire space here, other than the kitchen and the flooring, all we did was paint the walls. This is the only thing that's actually coming down that we put up. So welcome to the start of a very big project in 2024. Let me take you guys around. I'm gonna show you what this space currently looks like and then we'll get into taking this fireplace down. Here's our front door. We have a split entry into our house. So you come up the stairs and then you're in the main living area. Our couch isn't usually here. It was just because of Christmas. So we're actually gonna be rehoming our couch as well. My sister's gonna take that. We're gonna get rid of the fireplace wall and rehome that as well. I'd love for somebody else to be able to enjoy it since it is relatively new. And then our dining room, which walks out onto our deck and then the kitchen, which is a mess. Maybe I should have cleaned before we started filming this, but whatever, we real live life. here. This is real life. <laughs> When I hung these shelves, I just did pocket screws with uh, deck screws right into the studs. I didn't know how well this would hold up. I do have screws in the side as well. I'm shocked at how well just a couple screws held up. A lot of people were asking how they were supported. And it's just screws. <laughs> I knew it wouldn't fall, but I... Right, 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 right. So we're hoping with this whole project that we can sell it to somebody who wants it because I know that this design style is still very popular and a lot of people are still putting it in their house, but because we're gonna be swapping the spaces. Swapping the spaces. And we have a whole other plan for that side. Uh, we just don't have a use for it. Okay, you guys need to see the way that this mantle, very heavy mantle, is attached on the inside. Andrew did this while I was at work one day. Look at the rebar through the mantle into the wall. One, two, three, four of them. It weighs like a hundred and something pounds. And you did that all on your own? Yeah. <laughs> I drilled the holes through the plaster into the studs. I aligned the same ones in this, epoxy the rebar in the mantle, and then I just had to lift it up, slide it in, squirt some epoxy in the studs, and then I slid it tight in and they all lined up. That's why it weighs a hundred something pounds and it hasn't budged. Oh, what did I bloody glue these ones on? <laughs> ah. Holy smokes. Look at the screws in there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I really thought that there was gonna be a hurricane or something, eh? Oh my God, I forgot I did that. Let's see. I filled the hole with a magic eraser before I cocked it. No way. Yeah. 
because it was the, the plaster crumbled there, so I just shoved the magic eraser in and put the caulking over it. Holy. What? I had to hold it in place. What was I supposed to do? I didn't know you did that. I don't think anyone would suspect that I did that. That's how you know I'm a skilled carpenter. Carpenters make mistakes, the good ones can hide them. It's because I overbuilt this thing like crazy. Like that didn't have to be in there. So in addition to those rebar, I also put one, two, three, four, I put five of these. Just cause it was hard to push it tight, That those sucked it tight. How did I get this in here? I lifted it up and lined those up and slid it in myself. <laughs> Smart guy would cut the rebar. Are you gonna do that? No. Oh. <laughs> just lean forward and then on three, just lean back and pull. Okay, ready? One, One two, three. <laughs> oh, there we go. Just like that, our life as we know it is over. There's our fireplace wall, all taken down. All of this material here, except for these pine boards, was repurposed. It was used in the garage before we moved in. And I took some shelving apart and whatever was left over, I used to frame this. So there's the ceiling. You can see we had painted the ceiling after this was put up and you can see the color difference. We lived with it like that color for two years before we decided to actually paint it. Where do I store this wood? Also guys, look at this. You'd think it would be like a cool little artifact until you read that it says 2020 we did this. Three and a half years later it came down, but it didn't cost much because it was mostly repurposed material and... All we bought was the shiplap, the cabinets, and the insert. I think I got the insert on sale as well. I probably didn't pay full price for it. The mantle, we bought it from a local sawmill, so it was... It was $50. Was it only 50 bucks? And then the, yeah, the cabinets, we would have paid full price, but that would have been 2020 pricing. So it'd be more expensive now to buy the Ikea cabinets, right? Yeah. Okay, we're a few days later. We have the fireplace taken down. Everything is for sale. It's on Facebook. As of Friday, this video is going up on Sunday. Everything's still for sale. If you guys are in the Ontario, like Hamilton region, if you know where we live, and you're in the market for this, send me a message and on Instagram and I can send you the Facebook marketplace listing. However, we just had a very exciting call with our, what is he, an architect? Yeah, he's an engineer, but he's an architect. About the design of our house. So let's kind of talk about what the plan is for this space and we'll get you guys up to speed. Okay, so here's our current setup. I've shown you guys already. Living room at the front of the house, right off of the split entry. And then the dining room and kitchen on this side of the house. Again, please excuse the mess. As it stands right now, we are going to be swapping the spaces. The dining room will be moved to the front of the house <laughs> and the living room is going to be at the back of the house. And we will no longer have a split entry. Instead, our front door is going to get moved up into this opening here. Window shuffled over a bit and the whole space is being reconfigured because we are taking out this wall that currently has our pantry on the other side of it. We wanted to take this wall out when we moved here, but because this is load bearing, we have to put in a beam in the ceiling. So we kept it for now because it was cost effective to just keep it. Initially, this kitchen was like closed in with one little entry. So we opened it up, put in the island and put in a pantry. However, this is a lot of um, wasted cabinet space, at least for us, probably like a family would get a lot of use out of it, but our cupboards are always like empty. Um, we just don't have a lot of stuff to fill it. It's a lot of reusable bags and space that is not being used effectively. This whole space is going to become open concept and I'll let Andrew tell you about the ceiling. So we're gonna be taking that wall out, which means we're gonna be putting a beam in. While we have all the ceiling down, we decided it might be a good idea to raise the ceiling up. Originally we thought we wanted to vault it, but the cost to do that is just out of budget. So I think raising it by about a foot will make a huge difference. It'll create a nine foot ceiling. We don't want just a flat ceiling everywhere because it's a, quite a big room and you can see every defect that's in the ceiling now. Our design is we're gonna have a box 
at the height of this ceiling out about three feet all the way around all four walls and then it's going to go up a foot so that the inside of it will be a foot higher and because we have a beam running here we're going to match that maybe every four feet or whatever evenly spaced to give a, a wood look and then on the inside of the beams we'll either drywall it or do some sort of wood effect in there. I think it'll really make the space look nice. I also forgot to mention earlier that the living room is not usually this sparse, but I had been selling everything on Facebook Marketplace to prepare for this renovation. So like I said, the couch is gonna be going, the dining room is gonna stay, but it'll just be moved to the front of the house. I think that that makes more sense as well because off of our new living room on this side of the house is our deck that leads out to the patio so for half the year we're out on the patio so it kind of makes sense that the living areas are joined it, there's going to be a lot of changes and we're just so excited to share them let me show you guys what the actual drawing looks like currently you guys saw what it currently looks like the kitchen's going to stay in the same location we're going to flip the island right now it's running this way we're going to flip it and run it this way and then the family room will be at the back of the house with the dining room at the front and our new front door will be moved up and over so we'll talk to you guys about that as this process continues because I know that you guys are gonna have a lot of questions about what the heck is going on with that. How are you getting rid of a split entry? But in short, there will be a window in the stairwell. Also, the living room is going to be much bigger than the current living room we already have uh, with a big long fireplace along the side here with a gas fireplace insert. Supposedly, these plans could of course change. If you guys know us already, our videos tend to change. We have a plan for the exterior makeover as well but showing our current exterior on the internet has led to some like issues obviously because people figured out where we live and it's just kind of a very recognizable house as it is right now however we're going to be changing the exterior so we just kind of have to figure out how we want to go about showing this process um, in a way that keeps us safe. I know a lot of you guys are interested in the split entry makeover specifically because so many of you guys have the split entry and I don't think it's done a lot in this manner of removing the split entry altogether and raising it up. But let me show you guys what it's going to look like after the fact. So the brick will be gone. We're gonna be doing an off-white kind of cream colored siding, deck all the way across, new windows that are black and it's gonna be white trim around those. So as it stands right now, this is where our front door is, but lower. So you'd walk down the path and then our front door's right there. It's gonna get moved up, which is how we're able to put a covered porch on and stairs leading up to the front door. And then the front door just slightly moved over. And then possibly this window would, as well will be moved over too. But that kind of gives you guys what the new exterior is gonna look like. And I'm so excited to get to that point, but we're just still trying to figure out how we wanna go about sharing that. Andrew was able to pull up that this is what our current drawing looks like for our house right now um, with, with the split level entry and with our current little covered porch and so it's gonna go from that to that this year so anyway that's where we're currently at with this living room space there's gonna be lots of changes it's gonna be a really fun makeover I can't wait to start sharing it it's gonna be fun to do yeah like I because we're actually it's like the basement starting from scratch designing how we want rather than working with an existing before signing off on this video I want to give you guys a bedroom update Obviously, it looks a whole lot different than the last time you guys saw this bedroom reveal. Uh, I did go in and repaint. It's funny, after sharing the whole bedroom makeover, our first video back after the new year, and I was so excited to share it, and then I shared it, and I was like, ugh, I don't like it. Shout out to all you lovely people on YouTube who were just hyping it up, even after I was still kind of like, oh, maybe we'll come back to it. I came back to it like the next day. But I think it does look a lot better. It, it suits us a lot more. Uh, that green paint would just throw me for a whirl. But you know what? It's okay, live and learn. This kind of stuff is not to be taken seriously. A coat of paint can fix it. And uh, I was stressing about something that is so silly in hindsight. You guys were so nice about it and supportive even if you didn't like it. So I appreciate that. Anyways, we're gonna sign off this video. We're gonna see you guys next Sunday for another new video. If you guys have any design ideas for this upcoming renovation, feel free to share it in the comments or you guys can send me a message on Instagram as always. I love chatting design with you guys and we're gonna see you in our next video. Bye!